Hello, gents. Welcome to Chapter 6, Section 1. Now get ready to take notes and be prepared to ask questions tomorrow in class. Chapter 6, Section 1 is labeled Changes in Matter. The first part of the section is going to be a review, but the second half is something new. So here's for our review. There are different types of changes in matter. The first type is a physical change. We know that a physical change involves changes in an appearance of the material, but does not involve creation of new material. No new material being made, just a physical appearance change. That is a physical change. Examples of that would be creating a solution, or melting a candle, or breaking wood, tearing paper, etc. Another chemical, another sorry, another type of change in matter is a chemical change. A chemical change involves the formation of new materials. We know that these new materials are called products, and the starting materials are called reactants. The process of a chemical change is known as a chemical reaction. Now, how do we actually know that a chemical reaction has happened or a chemical change has happened? There are some ways to tell. It could be a color change. Heat slash and or light is absorbed or released. We can have a formation of a gas. We can have a formation of a precipitate. A precipitate is simply a solid that forms out of two solutions being combined together. So two aqueous solutions, combine them together, and a solid forms. That's a precipitate, that solid that is formed. Now, one important note is that chemical changes are not easy to reverse. Not at all. Now, we talked about a physical change being the creation of a solution. Now, let's, re let's revisit what a solution is. So a solution, as we know, can be categorized as a homogeneous mixture, a mixture having one single phase. There are two parts of a solution. One part that we know of is the solvent. The solvent is the material present in the largest amount. Usually this is water. Sometimes in laboratories it'll be an alcohol, but in our class it will mostly 99% of the time be water. That's the solvent. Another part of the solution is the solute. The solute interacts with the solvent. It's in the lesser amount. And when it interacts with the solvent, we usually say it dissolves. That's for aqueous solutions. Not all solutions are aqueous, but the majority in this class will be aqueous. So it dissolves. And these are salt crystals. What I mean by salt crystals doesn't necessarily mean salt as in the salt on your food, but salt is a very generic term in chemistry, meaning an ionic compound. It's called a salt. A cation body with an anion is a salt. And usually they crystallize, so we call them salt crystals. Now, there are different types of solutions you can have, different categories. One category is saturated and also supersaturated solutions. This is new. A saturated solution is a solution in which no more solute will dissolve in the solvent at a given temperature and pressure. That's considered a full solution. There's no more room for solute. It's full. But if you change the conditions just a little bit, you can get a super saturated solution, and which is, follow my finger, down here. It's a solution that contains more solute particles than it normally would at a given temperature and pressure. It's over full. It's super saturated. Now, these solutions are very unstable. An example would be a solution of sodium acetate. It's a regular solution, but if I were to take a solution of sodium acetate and heat it up, I can add more and more solute into the same volume of solution, making it super saturated. If I introduce one little crystal, solid crystal, to that solution, it would solidify. And that's what we saw in our lecture. Sorry, in our investigate yesterday. Now, an important note that the amount of solute in a solution can be measured by something called its concentration. So we can measure how much solute we're putting in a solution. It's quantifiable. And we do this by measuring its concentration. Let's talk about the concentration for a moment. Now, 
concentration of solutions is a big topic that we're going to be studying here in chemistry. A concentration itself is simply a measure of how much solute is contained in a certain amount of solution, usually a solution of one liter. So how much stuff, how much solute, how many salt crystals you have in your solution? That's the concentration. It's measured in units of molarity, which is symbolized by uppercase M. Now molarity can be broken down into an equation. The molarity is the number of moles of solute per liter of solution, which is synonymous with the definition of concentration. How many moles of solute are in one liter of solution? The general equation we use is concentration is equal to number of moles divided by the volume of your solution. Concentration is equal to the number of moles divided by the volume of your solution, which is exactly what this states. Now, let's do an example of this. An example would be if I make a salt water solution. I'm going to make one right now. Well, I know how to calculate the number of moles of solute if I'm talking about an actual compound. If I had salt, which I do here, nice iodized salt. So, one mole of NaCl is equal to the molar mass of NaCl. We remember the molar mass says that the mass of sodium and chlorine from the periodic table, add those two up and we get a mass of sodium and chloride and that mass is equal to one mole. So if I wanted to measure out one mole of sodium chloride, I would make 58.35 grams of NaCl. That's the molar mass of NaCl. I happen to have that here. 58.35 grams of NaCl. Now, in my equation, it says that the concentration is equal to the number of moles divided by the volume. The number of moles is here, one mole of NaCl. The volume is usually one liter. I happen to have one liter of my solvent here, which is water, which is going to make up the majority of my solution. So if I add these two together, I had my one mole of sodium chloride with my one liter. Of my solvent to create the one liter solution. I mix them up and I have a salt water solution. Now the math behind this is this. For one mole of my sodium chloride I had one liter of solution. Thus I created a one molar solution of NaCl. We label it as 1 M NaCl. Remember, the units of concentration is M, molarity. So we would say this as a one molar solution of NaCl. This is molarity, which is the unit of concentration, which we'll be using a lot in class. We'll do some sample problems in class tomorrow and talk about dilution as well. Hope you've enjoyed. Take notes.